So this patient's coming in for evaluation of evolving pilonidal cyst. You can see that it's under a lot of tension. This has happened a couple of times for him in the last little while. At this stage, it needs to be drained. We'll see how much um, material comes out, but it's quite taut through here. So we haven't added any freezing yet, so we'll have to try again to add some very superficially. This is uncomfortable because this area is inflamed as well as being very superficial. And then we'll have to drain this. This is something else that we'll have to heal, and then we'll have to reevaluate that um, in the future to sort of have a proper removal. So we've coated this with antiseptic. I'm just going to coat that again, just to keep things clean as best we can. Bacteria types that will be involved will be the typical ones. Um, so we'll see things like staph and strep. All right, this is, you're going to feel a poke here. This is un uncomfortable. I apologize, you're going to feel a poke. You okay? Mm -hmm. Going to feel a stinging. So that's what I want to have happen. I want that to blanch. I want to be just into the subcutaneous tissues. You okay? Yeah. If I go into the main cavity, it's really uncomfortable. Sometimes you can't help it because it's so superficial. But I want that to blanch just like that. You, you still okay? Yep. Does that hurt when I do that? Uh, I don't really feel anything. Okay, right perfect. Now. So here again, we use the number 11 blade. You okay? Yep. So you can see why it was so uncomfortable, how much pressure he has. So that's all purulent material, but you can see how there's some Swelling to it as well. See how that's just oxidized blood. So with these procedures, again, you need to make sure you have lots of four by fours available. But just imagine all of this material is putting pressure on his tailbone and coccyx. Probably couldn't sit down for a little while. And regrettably, a lot of people feel uncomfortable doing, sorry, doing these procedures because they're, I think, mainly worried about irritating structures. But if you realize you're just going to be opening it up to the superficial layer, it's not too bad. You okay there? Yep. So you can see when I push on different pockets, it's just going to ooze out. And just like the other case, so when I when I push on these, that is uncomfortable for him. It's just impossible. He's very very stoic with this stuff. To put enough freezing to encompass this whole area, um, it's it's impossible to have these blocks, especially down low. So you certainly want to cover anesthetic where you're cutting into. But these, the pressure you have to do to get this to clear, unfortunately, you're committed to that. Try to do it slowly, so the patient can try and be as un less uncomfortable as possible, but it still becomes hard. So essentially what we want to be doing here is we want to, so I can tell here when I push, there's not much of a pocket. The pocket's right up through here. So you can tell when I push here. And on that on this side, it's all through here. And that's typical of pilonidal cysts. Typically when you have to have these excised, you have to have a whole track removed that usually extends upward. tell even from here. Even from way up. You okay? Yep. Okay, it's a little bit more pressure. So I'm not trying to be uncomfortable with the patient on purpose, but we want to try and get as much of that out as possible so that this has a chance to heal as quickly as possible. And then once the procedure is done, he's, he's much more comfortable. The more we leave in there residually, the more trouble he'll have. So this is pretty good. I can feel that the tract is getting empty.
So this is why when you prep for these cases, you're going to need just an enormous amount of 4x4s four because you'll go through them. See, he's just zero sign just now, so that's not too bad. So now I'm going to irrigate this area. So I'm going to put some, so you're going to feel something cool. I'm going to put some fluid into this. Okay. Kind of a weird sensation. So this is obviously going to mostly just come back out, which is what I want to be quite honest. I just want to get a chance to irrigate that out. Let's see how you get more of the discharge there. We're going to do that one more time. Same thing here, we're going to see pressure through that. So again, at this stage, once we've cleaned it out, this is the stage at which I'll do my swab. So when it's as clean as possible, so all the dead um, pus and um, dead cells are removed, now we want to try and see if we can culture for some live bacteria. Again, being gentle, because the freezing here is not fantastic. You okay there? Yep. Not too bad. And that is the last step, and this is again something that we have to do gently. So we use a curette, try to break down some adhesion. Now this one extends pretty far up. Does that hurt when I do that? No. Not too bad, okay. He's pretty good, all things considered. The more we can break down again, the better he'll do with this. And if you're looking at this, this is all macerated tissue. That's then actually something we'll take out. That'll settle down as the infection has a chance to heal. Too bad there though. So then at this stage, because it's such a big cavity, um, we're going to actually put in some packing. So this is ribbon gauze. This is slightly thicker than I normally use. Usually I use a quarter inch. This is half inch. But that's all they have in the clinic right now. You okay? Yeah. So in the past, we used to pack these for weeks and weeks and weeks. We've gotten away from that now because it, studies just show it's uncomfortable for the patient. Right now, he's tolerating this because there's freezing involved. But tomorrow when I take this out, it'll be a little bit uncomfortable. But if I put some back in, it'll be really uncomfortable. So generally, we try not to do that. The only reason we do this now um, is because it helps with hemostasis, so it helps stop the bleeding. And then also, if there are some loculations that we couldn't get to because they're too high up, um, or they were just too firm, a lot of times it'll break down overnight because the packing's in place. And especially with pyelonidosis, you can get quite a, a tunneling effect that happens. So essentially, I should have just shown you that, but I, I forgot to. Um, essentially, what I do is when the scissors are clean, I cut the ribbon at the other end, and then I'll go up front here. So this part is all compromised, but I don't want to compromise the other end of the ribbon gauze. All right, so now we'll just put a dressing on that, and we'll see him back tomorrow.